guys, how you doing? I'm Liz and you're watching my channel Procrust the Painter. So I know I've done a video before on disassembling store-bought clocks, uh, but today's is a little bit different. So what if you make something like this that you actually want to turn into a clock, but you don't know how? Well, today I'm going to show you how I do it. So I got these mechanisms um, and hands here from Sandpatch Studio. I've got a link in the description box. Um, so to start off with, you need to know how thick your piece is. So you need to know how thick it is here. Um, so that that way that you know how long your spindle needs to be. This bit's the spindle here on the mechanism. So you need to have this bit long enough so it goes through your substrate plus all of your resin layers. Make sure that your hands sit higher than anything else that's on your clock, just so that they don't hit it. The other option is getting hands that are a little bit smaller than if you've got ticks that sit up high. Um, so the next bit is knowing how big your minute and hour hands need to be. So let's just say for example, this is about the center of this one. That would fit fine on here. And that one is probably okay, but if you've got ticks that are sitting up a little bit higher, then that might make that a little bit, they might hit. So these ones are technically good for, I think, 40. I forget if they're good for 30 or not, but this is a 33 millimeter clock. Um, these ones should fit perfectly because these have got, that's the hour and the minute hand there. So I'm going to use these ones today. Um, most clock places will actually say that they've got a set of hands for a certain size. So they'll have either a 30 centimeter or 12 inch clock, depending on where you are. So if you've already got ticks on your clock here, then you need to make sure that your hands are short enough that they don't hit or that your spindle is high enough that it doesn't touch any of these. Once you've ordered or gone out and bought your mechanisms and your hands, um, then you'll be ready to drill your hole. First of all, what we need to do is figure out where the center of this is. So, one minute, I've got to go get some paper and scissors. 12 seconds later. Okay, now I've got some paper. I want to make sure that I've got enough to trace around the whole of this. What you want to do is fold it in half. Fold that in half again. And again. You could probably do it again if you wanted to, but all we want to do is just snip a little bit off this little tip just here. Open it up. And you've got the center right there. Making sure there's no rubbish on your bench. Flip your piece over and then mark where the center is. Make sure that you're even all the way around the edges here so that you've definitely got the center here. Now we know where we've got to drill. If you're making a lot of the same size of these, you can save this and use it as a template for multiple ones. If you're really good at folding, you can fold this and get your 12 marks for the clock ticks and use that as your template for your number placement later on. The next bit you need is a drill and some drill bits. This one needs an eight mil bit. So, eight mil bit. Then we need to make sure that we're putting something down to protect your resin before you actually turn it upside down. Um, and you want to put it somewhere that you're not going to drill straight through your workbench because you're most likely going to punch through and then keep drilling a little bit into whatever you're drilling on. So we're going to move out to the garage. A few moments later. 
You'll need a drill and a drill bit that is slightly larger than the spindle diameter. Be sure to put something down to protect your resin from scratching while you're drilling. I've lifted mine up on a few bits of scrap wood and I've put just a uh, an old towel on top. Make sure you're actually drilling. So that way is drilling, that way is undoing. You're not going to actually make a hole doing it that way. Make sure it goes this way. Hold this, centre your bit on your mark and start drilling slowly just to make sure it doesn't slip and move around. Mine was slipping so I had to go and get a little bit of tape which means that I needed to remark my spot. Hold the drill so that the bit goes perpendicular to your piece. If you've got it a little bit wonky then your mechanism won't sit flush to the back of your piece. After you've started your hole it shouldn't slip anymore so you can speed up the drill but when you start seeing the colour from your piece, so the pigment from your piece start coming out, that's when you need to slow down. I can see some of the bits of the blue are coming out now, so I'm gonna go a bit gentler. You wanna make sure that you drill the hole slowly so that you don't crack the resin. Um, if you do make a little bit of a crack, you can cover it with the washer. Okay, so once we're all the way through, then you need to get your mechanism and make sure it actually fits through the hole that you just made. So it needs to be a little bit loose, but not really, really loose. So this is actually pretty good size for this one. In fact, it is the correct size for this one. If this doesn't actually fit through the hole that you just made, just get the next bit size up in your arsenal. So if this was if this didn't fit through, I would grab a eight and a half mil and just redrill the same hole. Just do the exact same thing as you've just done without needing the tape and you'll just make the hole a little bit bigger. Make sure you clean up any dust on either side with a soft cloth and then you get to move on to the next bit. Just make sure that this doesn't sit up proud or anything like that. You can get a bit of sandpaper and sand that off if you want to. Um, just try and make it so it's nice and flat ready for your mechanism to go on. More moments later. Make sure that you've got all the pieces you need. So all the pieces for your mechanism, your hands, the hour, the minute, and if you have one, the seconds hand. Um, you'll need, for me, I need an 11 mil spanner and you can use either a metal ruler or a forked to actually put the, the hands on. Grab your mechanism, have a look on the back. Where the battery goes is the bottom. Then what we need to do is get this little dude, the hanger, and the circle bit goes over the spindle, and this is the bit that you hang from. Well, the clock hangs from. You can see that there's a circle in the middle that this should click onto here. Before you do that, make sure that it's on the opposite side from the battery here. So basically you want to push it down until it doesn't fall off. You want it to be actually holding on properly onto there. The next bit is putting the gasket on. This is the gasket. Um, you can see that it's got lines on one side and like little grippy circle things on the other. So you want to make sure that you put it, the lines and grippy bits on this side. So you want that to grip hold of the back of your clock. Right, now that bit's all assembled right, now we want to put this bit, poke the spindle through your expertly drilled hole. Remembering that 12 o'clock is up, make sure that you put it through that way up. And then you can lay it down while we're doing this bit. But you basically want to have it so that the hanger is at the top. Um, the next bit is putting your washer on. So if there's a shiny side up, uh, if there's a shiny side, have that facing up. Just put it on there. That should hide it if you've got any cracks or anything from when you drilled the hole. And the next bit is putting the nut on. So I like to just do this finger tight to start with. Then you can make sure it's actually pointing the right way. 
be 12 o'clock. So remembering 12 o'clock's up. So I like to hold onto it in place, grab your handy dandy spanner, and then start to tighten the nut. So you want this to be not loose, but you don't want to do it so tight that you actually end up pulling the spindle out of the mechanism on the back because then obviously it's not going to work anymore. So you want it to be tight enough that when it's hanging or when it stands up it doesn't like move around anymore. So I reckon that's pretty good there. Once we've done that bit then we're up to putting the hands on. Okay some of the hands that you get have got a plastic film on them you need to take those off they're just a protective thing while it's in transit so you don't need to keep those on grab the hour hand first and you want to line it up for your 12 o'clock if you've got an actual tick here you can line it up perfectly for your 12 o'clock then you either grab your fork and you push it down like this or your metal ruler and you want to get your body above this and gently but firmly push down until you feel that it's actually on. So if you let it go and it falls off, it's still loose, it's clearly not attached yet. Give it another go. Alright, so that's on now. You can see that if I just gently touch it, it's attached. So then we want to repeat that exact same thing with the minute hand. Take your plastic off, if you've got it, line them up, all right that should be on. Now the next bit is, if I hang, hold this from the side you'll be able to see those hands are actually touching now. We don't want that to happen, we want these to be parallel to both the board and each other. If they are touching they will not work anymore. Once they touch, they don't have enough strength from the mechanism to actually keep going around. Make sure that you're gentle with these because they are very delicate. They're very easy to bend and you might not be able to bend it back to how you need it. So just be very, very gentle. I like to hold it in place with one finger and just gently prise it up a little bit. And I think that's almost the right spot now actually pretty good now. So I'll show you now. So there's actually a gap between them. So what you can do is using the mechanism on the back, using that little using the little red bit here, you can wind the clock all the way around and make sure that it doesn't touch anything if you've got proud things like if you've got rocks on yours or shells or something like that and make sure it doesn't actually hit anything before you add the seconds hand on there. So when you're happy with the the gap you've got here and they're nice and parallel, then you want to grab your seconds hand. Some clocks don't actually have it, they've just got a stopper. Um, so you just need to push this on with your fingers, you don't need the fork or the metal ruler. You just need to push it on firmly, but gently again and the same thing applies. So if it falls, it's not on properly, um, you wanna make sure that it's not touching, that it's nice and parallel to the other hands. So you can see there, it's not gonna hit. That's actually pretty good. From now on, don't touch the hands on this side. So if you wanna change the time, only use this here. If you wind it with your fingers, you're probably going to damage the mechanism and it might not work anymore. I like to put a battery in to test it and see that it keeps the time for at least 24 hours. However, if you do this, make sure that you have it hanging on the wall or leaning up to as close as vertical as possible. So you can just lean them up against the wall, on the ground or on a bench or something like that. If you lay them down like this, there's the possibility that you're going to one, lose time, or the hands might actually get stuck on each other. I have had that happen before. So it works fine this way, but this way it doesn't. Also, try and buy the colors that you actually want. So 
I buy white ones because I think they look good with the white waves. However, if you buy some just to spray paint them, they're going to be a little bit heavier, which might impact the ability for the mechanism to move them. And the extra paint might stop you actually getting them on the spindle here at all. It might make the hole too big, uh, yeah, too small. So if you want hands that are bigger or heavier, then you're going to need to get a high torque mechanism because I think the majority of mechanisms don't really go past about 40 centimeters, I think it is. And then after that, you need to have a high torque mechanism. I hope this video helps you create a clock out of your favorite piece of art. Thanks for watching. See you next time.